Hi guys, welcome to The Headphone Show. For today's video, I have an interview with Dr. Frederick Knopp from Head Audio that I recently did at CanJam in New York. Head Audio is a company that's well known for their speaker designs, specifically their use of what's called air motion transformer technology in their tweeters. Recently, however, they've managed to put this driver technology into a full-ranged headphone, appropriately titled The Headphone. Now, I've already reviewed The Headphone, so you guys can check out that video to see what I think of it, but the use of air motion transformer technology in a full-range headphone is kind of a big deal because this is one of the first times that we've had a truly groundbreaking new technology in headphones. And yes, I'm aware this has been done before in headphones, but it hasn't been done the same way that head audio is doing it. For those unaware, normally for headphones, you have dynamic drivers, which are the most common driver type, and that's just the usual sort of cone driver. Slightly less common is planar magnetic, which is basically a diaphragm that has a magnet on one or both sides, and then that's how it moves. And then less common than that is electrostatic, which uses an energizer system. So you have to have a specific uh, system there to make it work. But for years, we've used only these three driver types, these three trans transducer types. And now AMT comes along and kind of shakes up the game a bit. And like I mentioned, air motion transformer technology has been done before in headphones because this isn't a brand new technology. It's just that the implementation in headphones, the way that head audio have done it, is truly unique. And so for me, it was really exciting to talk to Freddie about this and understand his background and where some of these ideas come from. The fact that there's now this new technology in headphones, this new transducer type, it's great to see. And I'm excited to see the full swing production of the headphone and excited to see what head audio does next, but I'll let Freddie tell you all about that. So without further ado, I give you Dr. Frederick Knopp from Head Audio. So I'm with uh, Freddie from Head Audio, uh, and Head Audio just released their first headphone, uh, appropriately titled the, the Headphone. But what makes it different from the you know, traditional yeah. even, you know, planar magnetic and uh, dynamic driver headphones? Sure. Before getting into the whole headphone uh, game, we've been doing loudspeakers, and we still do loudspeakers that are based on something called the Emotion Transformer. But the Emotion Transformer traditionally is a tweeter design that works unlike uh, anything like a piston-based like cone or dome tweeters. All this uh, is based on the idea that air is pushed back and forth by a, a diaphragm and the velocity in which the air is moved equals the velocity in which the actual diaphragm is moving. Now in an emotion transformer you have a large diaphragm that is folded into a magnetic field and then if you look into a driver like that with a microscope you would see that each fold is kind of squeezing the air in and out and by squeezing it uh, the air is actually accelerated. So we believe it's a really good technology to catch musical material that has fast transients, um, everything with short attacks can be captured quite uh, more appropriately compared to traditional driver designs. And of course for the longest time we were thinking could there be a way of building this technology, taking it from a tweeter technology to actually a full range uh, headphone design. And, um, we're here because for the very first time we can say this has been done and we have a product uh, based on that now. When you guys were developing the, the headphone, yeah. uh, my understanding is that in order to ensure that there was a linear frequency response for yeah. the bass frequencies and the lower tones, yeah, yeah. you had to make some changes to the folds and the geometry. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that Actually, a little bit? Actually, yeah, we call this um, a variable velocity transform. In order to make the frequency response in the headphone right, you have to overcome this idea of the AMT tweeter in which all the folds have the exact same ge geometry. So in the headphone you have a more variable system in certain segments of the headphone you would see that the geometry changes, um, the depth in between the folds is uh, bigger, the width is uh, larger. So um, it, it's been a long process of trial and error also and the finalized headphone is probably the 25th revision um, um, that we finally agreed on using for the finalized product. So but when you change that the, yeah. the geometry there, that allows for 120 hertz and below to, to yeah, remain... Yeah, exactly. It, it, it paves the way for a yeah. bass response, but it yeah. also paves the way to uh, get the frequency more even. Uh, you can work towards um, shaping the mids a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It was quite a long process of finding out what changes result in what kind of change in the frequency response. Right. So, yeah. so and speaking of frequency response, what was was there like a specific target you guys were trying to get to or what, what, what did you determine as your you know, target? Was it by ear or yeah, by yeah. specific curve? Well, the, the main idea, um, the, the, the ground rule for this whole project was 
Let's Make a Headphone that is exclusively based on EMT and we wanted to have it full range so we really wanted to cover the entire listening range. So um, 10 Hertz was kind of the goal and uh, the AMT actually makes it possible to go as low as 10 Hertz and then the, the, in the nature of the AMT lies that it goes really high up so the headphone actually uh, rolls up around uh, 40 kilohertz. Right. And, um, and yeah. Far, and far beyond the range of human hearing. Far beyond, <laughs> beyond the, yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably also good for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the tweeters actually go even higher than that. Wow. Um, and other than that, it's, it's a, a balance between measuring and interpretation of measurements and as well as um, the human ear and individual decision making. Yeah. This is also kind of the beauty of designing something like a headphone or a speaker that at the end of the day you also decide what you find appropriate and what you find an accurate representation of a, of a specific um, instrument. Uh, mm -hmm. This is all really a part and that's where people uh, with a lot of listening experience uh, and designing ex experience come into play. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and that experience, as you were saying, comes from the, the speaker world. It comes, yeah, it comes from, from designing speakers, but it also comes from us being very experienced listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to a lot of concerts. We have, um, both me and my father have a classical music background, which really helps because when we design, uh, we always work with acoustic material, not because we are stubborn and don't like popular music, but uh, because it's for us it's easier to actually judge if mm. a piano or a violin or so a string chord that is, is represented yeah. accurately through a device that we're working on. That's the anchor point. For yeah, that's just kind of yeah. the anchor, yeah. anchor point, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also the fact that we have um, experience as record, record engineers and mastering engineers are among us. I'm a mastering engineer myself, so it's, um, this all shows, I think, in the way the headphone sounds and the way it translates. But I, my background is actually um, musicology. I oh. study musicology. I have a PhD in musicology, music theory, composition. This is where I come from. Uh, whereas my father is a classic physicist with a uh, also quite a fairly good piano player, yeah. one would have to say. Yeah. So, it's, but it's a it's a family company. Right? It's a family right. company. Yeah. yeah, very much a family company. Yeah. Right now, you guys are just launching the, the yeah. headphone. Yeah. Uh, as far as the future of the AMT technology goes, whether it's speakers or headphones, where do you see this this going in the next you know five ten years? Uh, yeah. Just yeah. You know, more implementation, or how, how does yeah. that yeah. look? Yeah. Uh, we very much feel like we've reached the next evolutionary step in the whole AMT history and yeah. process of AMT designing. Uh, so one of the things we'll do is we will look into uh, the learning curve and we will look into learnings that we got out of the headphone design and see if this could be applied to a certain extent into our Twitter technology as well. Mm. So it goes so full range. So it goes not, not full the range, but the, the, the variable oh, right. yeah, yeah. system, okay. if it could help to uh, shape uh, high frequency reproduction in the speakers as well. And another thing is that, of course, since we've got kind of cracked the code now, um, we are looking into uh, additional headphone models. Uh, which of course, I'm, I mean, well aware that this headphone that we just presented is more something to take home and to, to you know, have like a, a home listening experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my personal opinion, we, we owe it to our family in the music industry to uh, have something like a close back version already, probably at a more affordable price point. There are also some crazy ideas for something beyond what we just uh, came out with. But for now, we focus on the one we have and um, I think it's fair enough to go back to Berlin and sit down and see what the next model could be and build a portfolio of products. I would say that a lot of engineers, mastering engineers, music producers, yeah. they use headphones more as tools, um, as something they would need in specific situations where they would probably look for a little click in a recording or if they, you know, they set like a low pass right. filter and they want to make sure that it's set right and then they, they get cans. And, um, but it's not something they a lot of people kind of enjoy working with mm -hmm. and um, I would hope that the headphone kind of brings some joy in actually using headphones in the process of making music mm -hmm. and uh, in the process of music post-production. Um, this is definitely one part of it and um, the, the stereo image obviously is a very important part of, of uh, creating music, panning, uh, placing instruments into the, the, the spectrum and uh, creating a stage for music. and. Um, this is one of the core reasons why the headphone is quite on the bulky side because 
you want as much distance between your ears and the actual moving diaphragm because that's the decisive a factor right. for, for creating that kind of stage and um, only by changing it less than a centimeter would narrow the sound image mm -hmm. to a point that, that I wouldn't find it as attractive anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite part about the headphone? What, what was your, about designing it? About, you yeah, know. yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I think we managed to to create a supernatural sounding device and of course for us it's, it's almost magical, especially for, for my father to, to, to um, bring something that we always consider to be a high frequency device into a, a fully new context. So this whole world is kind of new for us. And what I enjoy most at the moment is that people are so emotional and so obsessed about this idea that there is a headphone based on a different technology um, that adds something to Ponara, adds something to Electrostats. It's not a dynamic drive. It's really something unique, something that stands by its own. And of course, it's always kind of the best you can yeah. achieve, you know, to, to, to bring a signature uh, to something. Yeah. And, and for this entire show floor, your guys' headphone is the standout unique driver technology that nobody else has. So that's, yeah. that's something that, you know. That's and you only, <laughs> you only have it now yeah, uh, yeah. in this first moment yeah. where you're launching. And yesterday we had people lining up all day. Today we have people lining up all day at least to, to just listen to this. Yeah. And so the bus is real and of course it's highly <laughs> great for us to see.